97.3 City FM. Relevant Radio, always. Great. Let's go to issues of taxes. Now, people say, or even local businesses say, there's so many tax exemptions for foreign companies. They get all the exemptions and we get basically nothing. The reality is that when you look at the kinds of strategic projects that we have brought into the country over time, whether they are agricultural related, for instance, the Rana Fish Feed uh, of West Africa, Move and Pick Ambassador Hotel, um, West Hills Mall, the Octagon. Um, there are Ghanaian companies like Usbet Hotel, um, FR Pharmaceuticals, Dandams Pharmaceuticals. All of these companies have taken advantage of the exemptions regime that is offered within the GIPC legislation. I think what we must take a look at is centralizing the framework and this is a conversation that we've had with the Ministry of Finance. I believe the IMF raised some of these conversations. Some studies have also been done. It is our ability to centralize the process by which exemptions are given so that the finance minister rightly is able to track all exemptions and justify appropriately what is accruing back to the country as a result of offering those exemptions. The reality is that right now, there are quite a number of different agencies and institutions that are offering exemptions, okay? And I'm not sure of the process by which every single institution arrives at a decision to recommend exemptions. I can tell you about what happens at the GIPC. It is intense and it is rigorous. You put in an application for uh, uh, exemptions of any kind. The first thing is to refer you back to the existing tax code because there are quite a number of benefits that are available within our existing tax legislation. If, however, you find that what is there is inadequate, you have a big investment, it's going to be over an extended period of time, you are at liberty to put in an application. That application will come to the GIPC. Then you've got about 11 entities that will sit, not just GIPC alone, and look at the substance of that application. Is it going to create jobs? Is it going to allow us to introduce new technology? What are the social implications of that investment? So you've got the Ministry of Finance, you've got the Bank of Ghana, the Ghana Revenue Authority, the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, Ports and Harbors Authority, the Registrar Generals, I mean the laundry list of all these agencies. So it's not a GIPC decision. It's very much a collective decision that we have assessed this investment proposal and we are clear. We have the Tax Policy Unit at the Ministry of Finance plus the GRA come and do an assessment. If we waive these taxes at this time and this company immediately kicks into profitability, how much are we going to be receiving back as a country? It makes sense to offer these exemptions to these companies. And that's the premise on which a lot of the infrastructure that I mentioned earlier on in pharmaceuticals and tourism, etc., and so on, has come to stay and it is serving the country well, okay? Uh, as I said, the position that has been, been taken, and I think it is the right position by the Ministry of Finance, is that we need to ensure that we can account for every exemption that is offered, what is coming back to the country. We are very much a part of that discourse. Uh, I certainly think that as we continue to see the benefits of the investments that we need in tourism, if we're going to make tourism a major contributor to our economic growth, most certainly the infrastructure will require certain kinds of exemptions. The rigor with which we look at it and the dedication with which not just that committee of technical experts, it then comes to our GIPC board where you have again policy as well as private sector representation also assessing it before they make concurrent recommendations to the presidency and to the finance ministry before it gets its final approval. Um, I, I think that's a level of rigor that every Ghanaian should be confident will allow us to deliver investments that have come with certain exemptions 
but in the medium to long term benefit the country. And these are some of the things that we, we have to look at holistically as we take decisions about our exemptions regime. So yes, of course, I mean, there's, there's lots of conversation about the taxes and the number of taxes, and we don't shy away from that. Uh, I, I'm certain that the Ministry of Finance is looking at ways in which they can continue to broaden the tax net um, so that there's more equity in distribution uh, uh, of the, the various tax ex obligations that companies at all levels of economy uh, are required to commit to. But at the same time, we don't discourage uh, and push away uh, big institutional investors who have the potential to partner with us as a country. And I think um, there, there'll be a lot of circumspection uh, in whatever the final decision is. But I, I think everyone sees the benefit of having exemptions. But, but do you share in the IMF's view that we need to cut majority of the exemptions because they're not serving us anything? I, I think our position is clear. It's not, it's not exemptions in and of themselves. It is how the exemptions are being offered who they are being offered to, and our ability to demonstrate and prove that for every single exemption that's been offered, we know what has accrued back to the country. Our statistics are there. Every time we offer exemptions to any company of any kind, the Ministry of Finance is aware of it, they are able to track it. Um, customs have their own system, so you've got GCNet as well. So there are a number of reporting controls, so you can see for yourself we offered this com company a uh, five-year tax exemption. They are now generating X billion um, in revenues, which are accruing back to the country or back to the state uh, in, in the form of tax obligations. So there's the proof right there. And, and I think that the Ministry of Finance, and quite rightly, government and Ghanaians in general, want to be sure that that level of rigor applies in every single instance. Um, we don't think as GIPC, getting rid of exemptions is the solution uh, because the reality is that it remains a very powerful tool. We've talked about the competitiveness within the West African, within the African context, but as we slowly progress towards regional integration, actually the exemptions regime are going to be very important for the choices that the business community will make, both domestic and international. Um, and that will probably be the tipping point, as has often been the case in other dispensations, if you look at uh, places like Malaysia and Singapore. Uh, it's just a reality. But they've been successful because they're able to track carefully what is offered to the business community and therefore what is coming back. So the issue is not with exemptions. They are not bad. Uh, but we must make sure that they work for us, just as they have worked for other places in, in, in the world. And I think that's something that, as I said, uh, under the direction of the Ministry of Finance, we're part of that conversation to agree on the appropriate framework to centralize uh, issuance of exemptions. I'll take the final question and leave you to get more investors in, into the country, but it will still be on the issue of taxes. To the extent that we recently saw Parliament approve um, a tax waiver of about $892 million, I believe, out of a project that will cost $1.5 billion. That's the, uh, the Tema Port expansion project. We gave a tax waiver of about 892 million cities to Meridian Ports and Services. People will say, of course, we're gonna get 1,500 jobs created. Um, in the end, we'll have the facility, the infrastructure there, but why should we give um, a waiver in excess of two thirds or almost two thirds of that project to a single entity? They're not happy about how or the amount of waivers we give, even though we have a good excuse to do that. What does the, um, uh, your outfit, you know, res how, what response do you have for issues like this where people have genuine concerns about the amounts we give out? Well, again, I mean, I think you have to take all of the statistical evidence into account before you take a decision that that is excessive or that is too much. Uh, I can't say that I readily am aware of all of the data analysis that was done in concluding that those, that level of exemption was appropriate. I can, however, say that when you look at infrastructure like port facilities and you look at the potential that Ghana has, uh, perhaps we need to do that analysis to be fully aware from the perspective of the 
uh, Ghana Revenue Authority, who are quite strict <laughs> uh, about re generating revenues from, from taxes, what would have informed that recommendation to the Ministry of Finance? I can only propose uh, that if you juxtapose what we're trying to achieve, positioning ourselves as a hub into West Africa, one of the smart things to do is to speed up the process with which you create e e efficiencies within your port systems. There's tremendous pressure on the existing port facilities in, in Tema. Um, if you think about it in the context of um, maintenance facilities uh, for ports, if you think about it in the context of goods and services coming into the country and then reaching out to the rest of the sub-region, there are many areas in which significant taxes could be generated from a very highly efficient, finely tuned, well-operated well uh, uh, port facility. And that probably may have informed the decision that those exemptions were appropriate. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, just looking at the agency in question and knowing our experience with GRA that they would have done quite a number of careful analysis and it's not just projections that are for the next 18 months or even 24 months. As I said, investment promotion is about 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Where do we want to be? Where do we want to see the Ghana's port facilities? Uh, and where do we want them to be positioned um, in the rest of the continental and global context? So the investment that is being made now, which is Ghana's investment in offering those exemptions, is because of what we're trying to achieve from a long-term development standpoint. Um, I'm juxtaposing and making projections because, as I said, I, I can't say I have all of the information. Uh, but for those who are concerned about things like that, uh, I think the GRA is quite an, an open organization. Uh, we as GIPC are also quite open if there are you know, genuine concerns, and I think they are genuine concerns, we're always available to uh, do the analysis and, and share some more of the statistics. Right. We'll have to say thank you very much to you, uh, Mrs. Mawina Trevor, for making time to answer some questions to do with investments and all that. We've been speaking to the CEO of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Mrs. Mawina Trevor, and we'll say thank you very much for joining us in this edition of Business Today on City 97.3 FM. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. We'll return next week. Goodbye. <laughs>